So, welcome back to Margot Bell Designs. It's cup day here. Today we're going to be making a baby cup. You can choose what fabric to use, you can choose the toweling, you can choose the trims, you can choose the colours. It's totally up to you. The possibilities are endless. Anyway, let's hop into it. We have some samples here. Very easy to manipulate a hand towel into a baby's bib. And then you can decorate it with whatever you want to decorate it. Okay? This one is just a simple flower. You can do a baby's uh, appliqued name. And then we put a nice little braid on the outside to finish it off. We have this one. We have clean ones. So the best thing about these bibs is when you put them on your baby, they can't undo it. You don't have to worry about velcro, press studs, anything. They can't undo it and they can't pull it off because it's actually going over their heads. Okay, so that stays on. And wash and win. Perfect. There's lots of different varieties and lots of different possibilities when you're sewing anything, okay? Of course, you could put some lace, if you wanted to, around the outside of your bib and attach that one. So what we're going to do today is actually a Christmas bib. So we have a lovely towel with a Christmas print on it and then we've gone and cut out an 18 centimeter circle around the middle and we've cut out some ribbing. Now what we're going to do first is actually just do some notches so we can work out the size of our circle and then the centre front and centre back front circle as well as the notches on our ribbon. Okay. So using our snips what we're going to do is work out on our ribbon halfway. So you just put a tiny little notch, about 3mm. Okay. And then when you're sewing it you know where it's going to be. The center and the center. Then if you overlap that by your seam allowance, and you do another notch, so you get roughly the same then you're going to work out your side seams and your center back. Center front because you'll have four notches. And then you can open that front with that little notches in it so you can see where you're going to stitch to. Then we're going to do the same on our neck, little notch on each side. Now, how do you work out the same thing from the back? Inside it. Uh -huh. okay. Ordinarily, you'd have your back not as shallow, not as deep as your front, but it's a bit. So now we have notches to mark where our rib's going to be balanced all the way around our neck. Okay, to the machine. Let's go. So with this rib, there's not really a right and wrong side. I'm just going to do a one centimetre seam allowance. Ideally, you want to stitch down one of the channels of your actual rib. That's the line you should follow. Now with this ribbing, there's no need to overlock this side edge. It's not going to fray. When we fold it open, we're going to need that edge to sit flat like that. Folding it over, and then we're going to do a one centimetre seam allowance. Around. Now you can put this seam to the centre back or to one of the side necks. We're going to put it to the centre back. Did you notice that this is a one way print? So when we're cutting it out, we've got to think about it. Our centre back notch is there and our seam goes right over the top. Make sure it's folded evenly. Let's go to the back tack right over where the seam is. So hold it in place, then stretch this bind around to your notch here. And hold it in place. We're not using pins. I'm just going to stretch that around as we sew it. to your centre front. I'm going to teach you to sew without you having to use, with just using your fingers. It's much easier, much faster. Make sure those notches match up. Stretch it around. And there we have one beautiful neck opening. Now we're going to the overlocker. Now we've come to the overlocker and we've got our right side here with our rib on it. And we're just going to start overlocking at the center back 
seam and work our way all around. We've got the rib side up because when you look into the garment, that is what you're going to see on the inside. You can actually do a binding trim around here to hide that. Make sure you get all those raw edges because toweling frays a lot. So with your overlocking, always go back over where you started and then come off at the end. When you're trimming your overlocking threads, give it a centimetre or so, and then just pull the threads up until they form a knot at the end. And then they're not going to come undone. Pull them as tight as you can. See how it's gone a little bit tighter there? And then we can just trim that off. And it's going to hold and not come undone in the wash or anything. You can do a stay stitch along that edge. I'm just going to press it today though. And then it's going to hold in place. Next up is a toweling bib with a Christmas bind to the outside. I've also got a plain one that I've just popped the rib in. What we're going to do is add a trim around the outside. Sometimes on your hand towels you've only got one neat edge on one side, like this one. So we're going to put a Christmas binding on all the way around. We might just chop the corner around the bottom so that we can have a nice Christmas bind all the way around in one piece. With your binding, it needs to be on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle from your selvage or your grain line, okay? So we're just gonna cut our binding four centimeters wide and cut it on the bias. You need to measure around your pattern piece to work out exactly how much you need. Before cutting your binding, you're going to need to measure exactly how much you need. So you're going to need to measure all the way around your curves and all the way down to the other side of your bib. If you want to change and cut this into a, uh, a curve and this into a curve, then we might measure from the center front all the way around and coming all the way back to the center front. And that's exactly how much binding we'll need. So today we're going to need 1.6 meters of binding at four centimeters wide. So we're going to have to put some joins in it. So what we're going to do is work out um, the exact same angle and then we're going to fold it over with a one centimeter seam allowance. We'll leave our selvages there and just stitch across one centimeter. So we're going to put our seam here, fold them over. It looks crazy, but it's the right angle here. Right? Overlap these so that when we sew our centimetre, it's missing our dots of our selvage, okay? Because that's a weak spot. Back tack, back to the other side. Back tack. When you fold that open, we can open that out. Press it flat and we don't need to overlap it or anything because it's a selvage, it shouldn't form when we're ready to put our bind on. We're going to start the bind on our squared up end. So this is the wrong side because you can see our overlocking. What we're going to do is stitch it on the wrong side and then fold it to the right side and top stitch it. Okay, and just allow where our centre back is. If we come down from here and if we give it a centimetre seam allowance, then we're just going to start probably about three or four centimetres long so that at the end we can come around and put that in the seam. I'm just going to do like a five mil seam allowance and we need to gently stretch that around the curve so that it's going to sit nicely. Tack, tack, and start. So ideally we want to hide this edge. Just make sure that where you're stitching it, it's on the other side of it. And I'm just going to have it opened out. Right, and when we get to the end, we need to work out that overlaps that by two centimetres, and that's your seam allowance. Not stretching it too much. Shall we? Hold that up. Stitch it. One centimetre. Now we don't need to overlock these edges of our seam because they're all going to be tucked in. 
Immune zone. Just... So once we turn it over to the right side, just pull it out all the way around. And we can fold that over to the edge and fold it over again. And now we've folded it, should cover our stitching. It's a bit hard to see our stitching. Of course, this fabric doesn't particularly match well. When you put cream with the white, it makes the white look dirty, but that's probably what grandmothers would say, or an old wives' tale. So you can choose whichever fabric you'd like, but I just thought this Christmassy fabric looked really nice. So I have a perfect little nine-month-old that can expect a beautiful Christmas bib this year, and that just folds beautifully around the curve because it is cut on the bias. If you're doing a lot of sewing, particularly at Christmas time, I tend to be really organized and have a couple of white threads on the go of my bobbin so that when I run out, I'm ready to go again and organized. Ideally, four centimeter binding should finish at one centimeter. Try and keep this same size all the way around your winding so that fold should cover that row of stitching and this edge should be caught down at the same time pull it out fold it over to the line edge to edge and fold it over again to cover that line of stitching should be one centimeter if you're pulling this too much, it's going to start twisting and we don't want that to happen. When you're cutting out this type of thing, see how I've got this black line and black pen that I've ruled my four centimeter wide edges. Just be careful that this is not too dark because when you're folding that over, quite often you can see a black line under there and you really don't want that in your sewing. Make sure that around the curves, these are all folded over and over again. You can press it before if you like. What I like about this print is it's got the tiniest little Merry Christmas in print. It's really sweet. Now where we've stitched our seam, we've just got to trim off that point so that's not excess bulk in there it can get quite bulky over that point because it's double layers trim press and we're off once you've finished your beautiful new christmas bib for your bobby we could embroider it and add something on. We could put a bow on the front of it uh, in the similar fabric or somewhere else or have a bow in the hair to match or a headband. Today I'm just going to pop it onto the front of the bib so it can be something that the baby can actually play with while they're having their meals. <laughs>